of 18. I think so. Welcome. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everyone. Pearl and Andy Lockwood here from Lockwood College Prep and College Talk Tuesday is all about kind of what's happening now with college prep in terms of financial aid, scholarships, getting into college. Uh, today we're going to be talking about confusing emails and problems and when changes. To when to panic, when not to panic. You should always panic. Don't I'll just panic. cut that short. And um, we're going to talk a little bit also about uh, divorced families, specifically a little bit of a change in the forms that are uh, required um, this year in uh, 18. I guess this is the 18-19 financial aid season. Correct. Yep. That's right. So, um, so yeah, so, so welcome. And uh, please pop in in the comments. We're going to be monitoring them, hopefully with volume off. Of course. Uh, and either, even if you're watching this on replay, and if you have any questions about college-related stuff, this is a chance to ask us uh, both. We may not get to it live, but we'll get to it in replay. So every week we talk about, you know, College Talk Tuesday is about what you should be doing now. And just a little plug for our Friday show, uh, that's College Coffee Talk. That happens at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, same Facebook page. And that's just free coaching. That's, a, that's one hour of free coaching about your personal situation. Unlike this, which is more about what's going on now. So, um, I want to talk, I guess, a little bit about, uh, you know, there's been some stuff on news, actually, I, want, I wanted to address first before we get into um, what's happening with the College Board website today and non-custodial parent information Etc. Um, just to remind you that this is really a business. There was a, a couple stories caught my um, caught my attention in the last couple of days. One was how a financial aid officer at the uh, at, at Columbia in the Teachers College, one, one of the grad schools, was accused of taking of um, accepting kickbacks yep. from. She's shocked as well. I'm sure you are <laughs> yeah, too. Honestly. Taking kickbacks <laughs> from uh, from students who were receiving free stipends as grad students at Columbia. So the, you know, the scheme apparently was, uh, was discovered because within days of receiving money, these students would write a check back to the financial aid minister with a little note in the memo that said thanks or you know, love, hugs or love you or something. Right. And they also apparently went on cruises and socialized together. So, so does that not pass the smell test? <laughs> it just it just doesn't pass the intelligence test. I mean, these are yeah. people in grad school at one of our our, our uh, country's most elite colleges. So mm -hmm. thought that was just a bummer. Yeah, almost <laughs> doesn't even deserve a comment. It's just ridiculous. Um, I was reading an article. It's more of an opinion piece, I think. In um, I think it was the Chronicle of Higher Education by a former university president president that was uh, dis discussing how not it's not so much anymore that the lazy rivers. Are, um, are are the are the, uh, the new standard that colleges use, but there's there's something more than a lazy river. Like I think LSU has a huge sort of water park um, shaped in the LSU letters now, which was like an eighty five million dollar uh, undertaking. Apparently, University of Alabama has a huge um, la lazy river. Well, you may think better as you're sitting in that tube happening along the Lazy River. So <laughs> I see the connection. Oh, okay. I think the title of the, um, of, the, uh, of the opinion piece was something like, Students Don't Need Lazy Rivers to Do Well in College or something. So one guy disagrees with you, but oh. you're probably right. Yeah, so, so, um, <laughs> so, so the, I guess the point of the article was that these, these two examples, the amenities were funded entirely, exclusively by student mm -hmm. fees. So we always talk about like rising college costs and tuition. That, that's usually the, the number that gets the, the most play. But there's also the hidden uh, college cost is fees. And I think these were rec fees that, that mm -hmm. had to be uh, uh, levied, mandatory. Well, uh, wouldn't fees. go under academic fees, <laughs> now would it? <laughs> oh. uh, if you stretch things, maybe. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. So OK, anyway, so let's talk. Um, let's, let's get to the, uh, the main discussion today, which is um, We'll talk about, I guess, the College Board website briefly. So that's that was down today. I know you were messing around with it. You were trying to figure out how to submit a non-custodial parent's information. Correct. So just kind of take it from the top. Well, 
this year, well, I'll, I'll start with first, unfortunately, and, and for those of you who have logged in themselves on the CSS Profile site for a very, this is their inaugural year of having updated their website, their whole uh, form, etc. And unfortunately, there have been many glitches, many outages by the CSS on the CSS site, um, often around uh, congestion times of um, heavy filing, and so those are deadlines. So due to cause the most panic, because everyone is trying to meet a deadline, and that is unfortunately often when these sites are going down. It was down today, it was down yesterday. Okay, so that's one whole thing. The other thing that changed this year with the with the change of the whole CSS profile altogether is the way in which they're collecting the non-custodial parents information. Before this year, for schools, with, within the schools that require the CSS profile, there is a subset of those schools that also require another document called the non-custodial profile, which is all of, it's a mirror image of the CSS profile, but for the non-custodial parent, the parent with whom the student resides with fewer than 50% of the time. That's the non-custodial non -custodial parent. parent. Irrespective of who claims who on the tax return. Okay, so in the past, when one would file a CSS profile, the non-custodial profile login information would then be generated and a non-custodial parent to the, would have to file that, that form. Okay, now... Well, it was called something... It was called a non-custodial profile. Yes, it used to be the NCP. The NCP, exactly. Now the NCP no longer exists. And this year, if you log into CSS Profile, there's a section, and this is as far as it goes, oddly enough, um, that says info for divorce separated families, etc. And when you click on it, it, it just loosely says that the non custodial parent uh, may have to file uh, his or her own CSS profile. Okay, so you would think there's still a special spot that would say the non custodial parent's profile because we all know that the non custodial parent isn't going to college. And, you know, they don't, when you obtain because I have login credentials for that non-custodial parent, it treats them like a student. Okay, so it's, it's extremely confusing. I've reached out, I've been in communication with the CSS profile, don't, and then we find out, well, wait till a school actually asks for it. There is a complete inconsistency of information and process, there is no place. I challenge you if you have some clear language about how to navigate through just easily clicking on something and completing this task of the non-custodial parents own CSS profile, but I challenge you, it's an undertaking. So... What type of challenge? Like to tell you how to do it? Correct. Oh. Is there a prize? Um, cash money? There is a cash money prize I hear. I believe it's free tuition to um, <laughs> one of our highest institutions. I think it was Columbia. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, 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 what, what exactly should a divorce? So, so let's say you've got. Um, so then we're talking about specifically colleges that take the CSS profile, right? And then, right, but which is about it's now it's, about four hundred. It's colleges. about four hundred schools, but a, a, maybe a third of those schools require the non-custodial parents' financial information, which would be through this application now called the non-custodial parents' own CSS profile. But I have also found that not all of the traditional non-custodial profile requiring schools are seeking that information necessarily. They may just require, like I'm telling you, they may though have, it, have you have the non-custodial parents tax info required in the IDOC, for example, requirement. Um, but there's definitely, it's an, a not sorted out thing this year, the non-custodial profile across the board. So my recommendation is if you are at a school that requires not only the CSS profile, but in the past, or there's language on the school's own website, which I always direct you to, to find out information about schools for which your student has applied or is planning on applying to. And 
within it, within it, you'll see what is actually required of the non-custodial profile. And then if you still believe there is a non-custodial profile that's required, there are two things. The school site itself may have its own non-custodial pro parent profile that you have to see if it exists. And then alternatively, what you do in the case where they are expecting the traditional non-custodial profile, in which case I would reach out, have your student reach out, call the financial aid office and ask them what exactly what is needed at that school. So to sum up, there's no rhyme or reason necessarily if you're in a divorce situation, one school may require you to fill out this new but old non-custodial profile, separate profile, right. basically. Yeah. I think there's no, I think technically there's no more non-custodial parent profile. It's just that Correct. if you're divorced you're pl and you're applying to one of these colleges, that these 400 colleges that takes the CSS profile, there's a chance that the college will require additional information from the old, the deadbeat dad, from, from the ex-spouse, and then that chance may entail that ex-spouse completing their own full-blown profile, which Correct. used to be, went back in the old days, that was, it was different. Yes. Because it was a sort of a scaled down profile. Exactly, and Got it was it. also triggered by the filing of the CSS profile. I just wanted so, to so round they, So they have to look in people, so, so you have to monitor your, your emails. You need to monitor your emails, and you also need, and your students' emails, and you also need to, many schools have, have sent, upon your applying to that school, you log in information to its own portal within its site. I encourage you to make sure not to miss out logging in in those situations. You know, off the top of my head, I know Chicago, Chicago works that way, Penn works that way, um, all right, many schools. And you need to, BC works that way, you gotta log in, check your, the school's portal for your missing requirements, which may be financial aid or academic or otherwise. Or not missing. We're not missing, <laughs> right. exactly. And, Wait, and furthermore- before we, go, before we get to that, set, I, was, I was giving, I was serving you a segue. Wait, before the segue, you one wait. more thing on divorce Okay, but I want to say hi to some people. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> Hello <laughs> to Ann Arnold. Hello, Ann. Hello to Barb Mitchell, who I spoke to about an hour ago, and apparently, I don't know if you have nothing else to do, or <laughs> shouldn't you be at school like terrorizing the, <laughs> the staff there, which we talked about in this office a few days ago. Barb's one of those people, like you might be, at, at, uh, at your school, where um, when she comes walking down the hall, they kind of avoid eye contact because she, they know they're going to run, because she's going to you know, tell them how they're not doing their jobs, yeah. which is only the case because they're not doing their jobs. Right. So, anyway. Hi. Welcome, Barb. Continue your public service. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stop. That's funny. And, uh, yeah, see Patty Schwartz is on. All right, good. Debbie, Debbie Hunter's on. Okay, so if you have any, any uh, questions, substantive or like or opposite, which would be mostly my, the way I describe my comments. Uh, I do have in. something that I need Continue. to add. Okay. okay. Like Getting, an issue can't scratch. Correct. Um, and for those divorced, separated families where there is a lot of strife, difficulty, no contact, no participation, what have you, falling under, how am I ever going to get that fill in the blank, to complete help because he hasn't blah, 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 blah. In those cases, there is a non-custodial parent profile waiver, and that is on the College Board site as well. You would complete such a waiver, and if you know you have schools that require IDOC, you would upload that completed waiver to IDOC or send it directly to any school requiring or, or seeking a non-custodial parent profile. And um, just cautioning you that it is at the discretion ultimately of the school whether to accept that waiver or not, depending on what they want to do. Well, <coughs> what, 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 what Pro's getting at <clears throat> is a very all too common, I guess, uh, type of situation where you have a contentious divorce and the ex-spouse, which is always the dad, in our in our experience, refuses to pay or refuse or is obligated to pay a certain amount, but you know something like that. Um, the in truth, it's less about what they're obligated to pay, but more about their resources. But if they're not going to pay at all, so I think I was talking to we had a couple of um, yeah. divorce families in yeah. this week last weekend, and um, I think um, m most of the time 
what ends up happening is um, you, you fill out this waiver and you try to explain things to the, to the school that they're not going to participate. And then they, they might say, well, you know, what are you basing that on? Right. And it could be, well, you know, he's uh, $200,000 in, in arrears. <laughs> in and child we're, support. we're in court, you yeah. know, for the last 18 months. Right. Right. And that's, he's, that's, that's, my, that's why I have more than a good faith uh, type of opinion that he's right. not going to be um, shelling out the dough anytime right. soon. So they may ask for that. Yes. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So what else? Let's talk about some of these. Let's talk about fake news. Let's talk about fake um, to Facebook. Let's talk about fake school news, fake emails. Because I, I feel, I feel, <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> Pearl. Jeez, I find I'm that. It. Well, I find that oppressive. Okay, so uh, I, I was a macro aggression. <laughs> Pearl doesn't do micro. No, she's all about <laughs> macro. So, so um, let's talk about panicky emails that you are getting, which are prompted by panic-inducing emails yeah. from colleges that we talk about all the time. Colleges will say stuff to, to kids and yeah. and parents like, hey, we didn't get your FAFSA. So right. I've, I've sent you a couple yep. of those emails this morning. Correct. And how do you handle that? Okay, so know that if you know you have filed and you know that the day you filed or we filed or whatever, you got a confirmation email on such and such a day, or parenthetically, for those who do <clears throat> subsequent filings, those are considered corrections, even if it's just to add additional schools to the FAFSA. Um, you have login information and always a historical record of every filing. You can always pull up, generate a PDF of every filing and with all the schools that it went to and time and date stamped. So know that, and that's great. But nonetheless, schools will say you don't have it when you know in black and white you do because you're holding a confirmation, you're holding your PDF of the student aid report showing that it does. It's okay. Just know that unfortunately it is rather routine that schools will tell you something is missing when in fact it's not. You call up the school, you call up the financial aid office, and you say, I want to confirm that you have everything you need. I got an email that you were missing my FAFSA. I have a confirmation that I submitted the FAFSA on October 30th. Um, I have a copy of my student aid report. Do you need it? And then generally at that point, this person from the school's financial aid office says, oh, we have it. You can disregard that email and all is fine again in the world. But sadly, it, it happens you know, en masse. And I can tell you right now it's happened University of Chicago has a lot, a lot of kids I, I have submitted to the University of Chicago have sent me emails. Well, FAFSA has been filed for months. Um, and you do just that. And it always, the conversation honestly always stops at that point. They go, they call, they call, and they, you were right. They have it. Okay. So just know that that happens and don't freak out and know everything's verifiable. On the other hand, um, if you forget to add schools that may be subsequently added because the list was 13 when you first started and then since then, you know, we're now in January, you may have heard some good news and some bad news and maybe you've decided to widen your search and you add additional colleges to your list, you got to remember to submit the financial aid forms to those additional schools as well. Good. All right, I see a couple, couple more folks joining us. Hello to, uh, to Courtney, who is in mid-appeal uh, status right now. So I spoke to her a couple of days ago. And uh, I feel relatively confident, as confident as I can be uh, about that. Um, if you guys have any, uh, any quick questions, we're going to be on the end another minute or so, and then we'll be going about Back. our regular day. <laughs> filing forms because the CSS profile has been down for a bunch of hours in the last 24 hours, which is rather yeah. unnerving. It, it, so well, I have to get back to that. Not that October 31st, but, um, yeah, that you know, fine. the profile changed this year, and that, that's that's a big reason why the site's been going down. Right. And by the way, big, you know, 335,000 foot point here as well is, it's not just happening to you. If the CSS profile is down for you, it's down for everybody else, and everybody else didn't make their deadlines. That you know, so schools know this. They know it's the first year of the CSS profile. It was delivered this way. They they know about the outages. So relax. It'll work out. Yep. 
Very common. Yeah. Pearl has almost a zen-like quality oh, to her yeah. when she's on the air. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Easy breezy zen. You should, someday we'll have her do her Yoda impression. That's out of her many talents. Uh, okay, no. maybe later. <laughs> didn't want to play this other. She's got to get in I didn't character. want to ruin it. Yeah. I got to think You're more it. of a method actor. All right, so thanks for watching us. We're going to be back again next week, just giving you the, the news, the latest college planning news, what you should be doing now. And if you have any one-on-one -on -one college coaching questions, we do that every Friday for free, uh, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time College Coffee Talk. Grab a cup of coffee. Sit down with me, occasionally Pearl, allegedly, although that's usually not one of her days that she likes to um, come on the air. It's one of my walking days. It's a walking day. It's a day she doesn't like to dress up, um, which is about six days a week. Yeah. She's, she's more into comfort. Um, I'm more about the glitz, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, uh, so thanks for watching. And again, any questions or comments, pop them in here, whether you're watching this live with us now or on replay. Thanks a lot, and we'll uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks Bye -bye. for watching. Bye.